Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. We are literally in the home stretch here of getting the KNT 2HL horizontal mill up and running and cutting some chips. These are the overarm supports. The one here on the left is the intermediate support, which would mount somewhere in the middle of the arbor. And then the one on the right is the style A, which mounts to the end of the arbor and you can see that both of them are dirty and have some problems. We'll start by doing some quick disassembly and starting here with the style A. This stud in the top is to clamp it to the overarms. That came out a little bit easier than I was expecting. This is just the fill plug for the oil reservoir. Now there happens to be a caged roller bearing mounted in this bore, which is actually incorrect for this particular style overarm support. And it's also missing one of the rollers, so we're going to have to address that at some point. There are four small screws that hold the bezel around the oil sight gauge onto the support. Well, this bezel is stuck in here pretty good. It might have been just painted over, but I'm going to need to use a little mechanical advantage to get it off. With that bezel off, I can remove what's left of the sight glass. That'll have to get addressed at some point. Underneath the sight glass is a rubber washer. And then underneath that washer is the back plate with the level gauges on it. Stuck in there pretty good. With that back plate off, we can see underneath it, this is actually stuck to it, is another rubber washer. Now inside the reservoir, you can see there's a copper tube that leads from the reservoir down into the bore where the bearing is, but the oil doesn't drip in there directly. There are wicks that wick that oil from the reservoir that take it down into the copper tube. The wicks do a really good job of basically controlling how much oil actually reaches down in there. You don't want it to just all leak out at once. So the wick gives it a gradual lubricating effect. These wicks here have a, have a wire in them, like uh, pipe cleaners. I don't know if this is the way that they originally made them or if these were replaced um, at some point with what's in here now. And that's it for the style A support. It's a part as much as I'm going to take it apart. Uh, it needs to be cleaned now. I will strip it of all the paint and give it a fresh paint job before we reassemble it. And now we'll move on to the intermediate uh, overarm support and start taking it apart. The intermediate style support is virtually the same as the style A, except for the bushing that the arbor runs on. The oil reservoir and the clamping lug are identical.
So for this intermediate support, there's this brass or bronze bushing that's held in place with this uh, bushing nut that allows you to adjust it to be the right fit for the bearing on the arbor. This bushing is tapered, so it only comes out in one direction. Now one thing that's missing here on this bushing is what's referred to as an oil retainer that goes inside this slot, which from what I understand is a sliver of oak. Well, now this is completely apart. It just needs to be cleaned up and get given a fresh coat of paint. I spent some time on the wire wheel cleaning up all this hardware. I also removed all of the paint from the back plates on the sight gauges. Uh, they were stained and were in need to be restored. So I'm kind of going to show you what I did to bring these back to a more presentable appearance. Well, to restore these gauges, I need to start with some new paint. I'm going to use some universal bonding primer, some white semi-gloss enamel, and then once I redo the lettering, we'll cover it with some crystal clear enamel clear coat. I want to make sure these are nice and clean, so we'll put some acetone on a shop rag and make sure there's no leftover oil or grease on these. I'll give it a coat of primer, and then once it dries, we'll apply two coats of the uh, white enamel. Well, it's been a couple of days since I put on the second coat of white enamel, so I'm now ready to go ahead and redo the lettering. Before I stripped the paint off, I did take a photocopy of one of the gauges, so I had an idea of what I want this lettering to end up like. Well, what I'm going to use for new lettering is this sheet of dry transfer letters. These are not adhesives or stickers or anything like that. They're a dry transfer. And what you do is you take a pencil or a burnishing tool, and once you have your letter where you want it, you basically just draw over it. You burnish it. And once you're done burnishing and you remove the template, that letter is left behind. Now I found this sheet of transfer letters at Hobby Lobby, but unfortunately they don't sell them anymore. I've been able to find them online, but I think another source is some model railroad transfer letters, which uh, you can get from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to try something like this yourself. So I'm using a pencil here to extend some of these lines so I can use them as a guide for applying the new letters. I'm extending references to not only where the letters themselves land, or the the high and low lines, but also the the little holes where the oil comes through, and the, anything that I can use to help me figure out just where these letters will land to get it as close to stock as as possible. Now it just so happens that this sheet of transfers also has some short lines on it. And I'm not sure if they intended them to be used this way, but I'm going to use them to replicate the high and low horizontal lines from the original.
The one thing about dry transfers, though, that I haven't been successful in, and that is if you make a mistake, uh, you can't really remove it. Once it's down, it's down. So I have at times been able to redo it, right, by putting, in this case, the line, a new line over top of the old one and reburnishing it. But other times I've had to strip all the paint off and start over. And since these letters aren't an exact replica of what was on the original gauge, I'm sort of guessing where some of these should start. I like to start in the middle, especially if it's center justified, and work my way out left and right. Well, there's the first one complete. All the lettering is done on it. And I think it came out looking great. I know this is probably a little bit of an extra step, but I like it and I think it's worth it. Once I complete the second one here, I will apply two coats of the uh, enamel clear coat. Well, if I'm going to go through the trouble of relettering those back plates, I need to do something with the sight glass itself because this isn't going to do. I did find these clear discs on Amazon. They're not quite exactly the right size, but I think I can trace out the originals and trim them to the right size so that they'll fit into the overarm. I found the best way to reduce the diameter of these things is by using a flap disc on an angled die grinder. I just very carefully and slowly grind off the circumference of the disc until I get to that black line. And then I go one step further and make that black line disappear. And once I do, it should be the same size as the original. The nice thing is it doesn't have to be exactly round, it just needs to be round enough and I think that's really close. Using the flap disc does create these little melted burrs that come up on the edge but they're brittle and they just snap right off. We'll bring in the freshly painted overarm here and give this a quick fit and that slides in there pretty nicely. Well, with that fitting the way I need it to, I can peel off this protective cover that's on both sides and then clean up any remaining little melted burrs on the edge. Well, another part that was missing on this intermediate style overarm support was a filister head screw that locks this ring in position so it can't 
uh, come looser or go any tighter. Once it's fully adjusted, I need to have a screw in this hole here to keep it from moving. I'm going to make one on the lathe, but before I can, I want to see what the radius is of these notches in the ring so I can turn the head of this new screw to match. Using my set of stare uh, radius gauges here to find something that is close and head on over to the lathe. I'll make this screw off camera. Well, we'll start the reassembly of this intermediate uh, overarm support by replacing the felt. So I'm not using this pipe cleaner as an oil wick. Uh, it's just the first step in me replacing the wick. It'll make sense here in a second. The pipe cleaner was just an easy way for me to define the path here that I need this string to go. I'm going to take this string and I'm going to pull it through the same route and then I'll use the string to actually pull the new wick. The wick that was in here when I took this apart was this pipe cleaner style wick and it's got a wire running through it and it makes it a whole heck of a lot easier to install it but I couldn't find any pipe cleaners including the one that I just used that would actually wick oil. They, I tested several and none of them worked. So I'm going to opt to use the felt cord style wick, the same kind that I used when replacing um, the oil wicks in the saddle. So just like I did with the saddle, I'm going to tie the string on the end of the felt cord and then pull it through. I'll leave it long enough so it will drape into the bottom of the reservoir here and then wick up that oil down into the area where the bushing is going to be. Now I can go ahead and reinstall the washers, the back plate with the new lettering on it and the bezel to close up the oil reservoir. Now I can reinstall the key that the bushing sits on to keep it from rotating, the main bushing, that locking ring, and then the new Philister head screw that holds the locking ring in place. I use one of the arbor bearings to slide it in here to adjust this bushing. The tighter I make that lock ring, the further it pulls it through the taper and the narrower it will make that bushing. Well, it's set for now where I think it's going to be so I can put that new screw in that I've made and lock that ring in place. So with that bushing in place, I can measure the gap that's left in there and, and I'll make that uh, oak insert sometime off camera after I'm sure how big it needs to be. Well the last thing to install is the stud for the overarm clamp itself and to be sure that I don't inadvertently back this out I'll put a little blue Loctite on the threads.
So I went ahead and assembled the other overarm support um, off camera. The one thing I need to do here now is to deal with this bearing. This is the one that was in there originally. But it is not what it's supposed to be in here, at least not what it was from the factory. This overarm looks like it was bored out at some point because there should be a taper right here. You can see that there's remains of one, but the rest of it seems like it was bored out, or at least that's what I'm presuming. This is a photograph of what should have been here, uh, this bushing and there should have been another uh, locking nut on the opposite end that you would tighten to pull the bushing into size as it wears. So I'm going to stick with the bearing. However, this roller bearing is junk. It's missing a roller. I did procure a new one. It's the same one that was in here. It is a bit of a loose fit in that bore. So I'm going to need to make a bushing to make sure it seats in the right spot that the oil wick comes down into the center groove and then I'll probably Loctite it in place. So I have a piece of mystery metal scrap in the lathe and what I'm going to do is turn this down to an OD that will be a slight press fit in that bore and then the ID will be just larger than the ID of the bearing. So the arbor won't ride on this bushing here at all. This bushing here is just to make sure that the bearing stays where I want it. with that bushing now complete on the lathe we'll bring it over here to the arbor press and we'll just push it in so that it is even with the surface of the bore back over here at the bench that bushings in place so now I'm going to install this um, bearing see there's a groove in the center with an oil hole and I just want to make sure that that lines up with the oil wick that's coming out of the center of the bore I use a sharpie here just to mark the center of the bore where that oil wick comes out to make sure that as I slide this in I've got a good visual cue. I have some Loctite 638 retaining compound. I'll put that on each half of the bearing here before I slip it in and that should lock it in place. Well, with the overarm supports now all back together, I guess the only thing left to do is install them on the machine and maybe make some chips. I'll start by installing this one and a quarter inch arbor and tightening the drawbar. With the arbor secure in the spindle, I just need to slide on spacers and then put in a cutter. Of course, I'm going to use the largest cutter I have, because why not? I'm going to use both overarm supports, so I'm using this big bearing. That's what the intermediate support will ride on. With this mill, I have to manually push these overarms out. So we'll push them out to extend a little bit past the arbor and then lock them in place. Put a little bit of oil first on this bearing spacer, because there's still no oil oil in the overarm support itself. I haven't filled the reservoirs, but I can now put this on the overarm and slide it down until it's resting on that bearing. 
Next, I'll go ahead and put the key in the arbor so the cutter won't spin on it, which is going to be a six inch cutter that will create a one inch wide slot. And we can put on the rest of the spacers and then uh, the nut on the end of the arbor and then we'll just hand tight that for now. Put a little oil here on the end of the arbor and then I can slide on the style A overarm support. I've got this big chunk of scrap here off of the shelf that we'll put in here as a test. Incidentally, this vise is the one that came with the milling machine. I've done nothing to it. I haven't even cleaned it. So, pardon its ugliness. Well, after I touched off, I raised the table up a hundred thousandths. We've got it running at 60 RPM, and I've engaged the table feed at two and three quarter inches per minute. Well, there are the first official chips on this machine since it's been back together, and I think it did excellent. You could hear that rhythmic sound that the cutter was making, and I believe that's because there's likely a very small, undetectable bend in this arbor, and it'll do fine. I, I'm not worried about it, even in the least. going to step it up just a little bit here. We've got a 200,000 depth of cut and now we're feeding in at three and a half inches per minute. This is in real time. We're not speeding this up at all. Well, that machine didn't have any trouble whatsoever making that deep and wide of a cut. Uh, pretty happy with the results. The surface finish is good. That cutter, I think, was pretty much brand new. But I'm not going to push the machine any more than that just yet. I need to learn a little bit more about proper feeds and speeds. Well, I think that's going to wrap up this video and the rehab of this machine. It is ready to go for the next project whatever that might be because I don't know yet I still need to acquire some tooling for this mostly cutters and I'd like to get this set up so I can cut gears I have a dividing head and index plates I just need to get the right arbor and the right gear cutters for it I do still have the universal head that I need to get apart and get ready to go. 
I know it's going to require at least some repair work. Hopefully it will be repairable. But until I know that, I won't go out and procure the drive gear that I'm going to need for this, which is going to be at least several hundred dollars. So that's going to do it for this episode. I do appreciate you watching and I appreciate those that are subscribing and liking the videos. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll know when I decide to do something else with this machine. But until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.